got a lot of threads going here, just like a Malcolm Gladwell book. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nothing, nothing the template the that he brings from the tipping point and outliers, mm -hmm. this, I call it weaving. I don't know what it's called, but he, he starts these little, he plants these seeds and then they start germinating at different times. And you did that in the Simon article where there would be a theme occurs mm -hmm. and then he goes away from it for a while and you come back to it again. And eventually yeah. it all wraps around itself like a strand of DNA. It's lovely. Uh, you know, he really, I can't say he was the first one ever to do that. But he really is the reason um, bookshelves look the way they do now with everybody, you know, the new science of this and the old science of X, you know, so much of that came from um, his first experiments because he was a guy who just got, he covered science, he covered epidemiology at the Washington Post. Yeah. And then he started applying what academics were saying to other things. You know, I, I guess the other guy who does it although he does it in a different way than Malcolm, is Michael Lewis. Yes. And uh, it helps that they are two, and I can say this because I've edited probably eight, 10, 12,000 articles in my life. Uh, they're probably two of the clearest writers and they're probably two writers who allow, this is going to sound strange, but they allow the reader to sort of involve themselves in what they're writing. They allow, their writing has natural breaths to it. Um, I, I taught at the Columbia J School this past term. I'd never taught up there before. And, and, you know, we didn't really get to this part, but so much about that writing is, is letting people breathe. You're giving people a lot of information and how you do it and how you present it. And the images you find to present information um, you know, something like the Simon Project, you know, I probably wanted to junk it up with a lot of stuff because I was fascinated in so many things. And I think Malcolm probably, and this is a good thing, he kept it much cleaner. It really is, it's, it, there's a family story uh, with Paul and his father, which I frankly thought was a little more eatable than Malcolm did, but that's okay. Um, there's the creativity story, the longevity story. Um, you know, there are some other things. Yeah. Um, but he, he was looking for those longer narrative arcs. Let's stay with words for a second because, because they're so important to a book mm -hmm. and the cadence. Uh, as somebody who edited newspaper journalism for so long, did it make you crazy? The short sentences, the phrases, did you want to no, well, of... well, look, there are reasons for that. And, you know, I started in magazines. And when I first started editing stories at the Times, I was editing magazine stories. And, well, once you put that in a newspaper format, it's just, it's torture. You can't do it. Right. Um, no, it, it didn't. I, you know, I think the one thing that drove me crazy, and I, I told my students this, was the whole idea, you know, um, a, a news story is... Uh, in, in newspaper crimes, it's called the inverted pyramid. You put all yeah. the information at the top yeah. and then it kind of gets, and there are literally um, you know, graphics that show how it gets less and less interesting as you go down, you know, and to the point that you know, only, pe you know, only people who really care about this will read this for you. Put your dullest stuff at the bottom. Right. I first thought, wow, that's unlike any other form of writing. People don't have songs where they sit, just put the, it's a good song. Can you put the dull stuff at the end? No. Nope. Um, people don't write poems that way. People don't Scripts. write short stories that way. Movie there's scripts. no food. magazine story. Yeah. There's, uh, and really, it's 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 an artifact of the way newspapers used to be put together. You didn't know how long the column was going to be until it was put together in hot type, and you had these guys down in like the you know the printers. Who, who could manipulate all the hot type. I mean, they were brilliant, but they had to take it off from somewhere. You weren't, you weren't gonna tell that guy, can you just spin it out at the top? Um, you know, they don't, you don't have those restrictions anymore. So I'm like, no, no, it's gotta be, have a great, we, we call them kickers, I don't know, you know, in newspapers. No, have a great quote at the end. Make people, your, your job, like for me, you know, my job is, is like, I dare you, I dare you not to finish this article. Yeah. Um, that's our job assignment. I dare you not to do that. Or a comic strip about Syrian refugees. Once you read one, <laughs> I dare you not to get incredibly involved. Like uh, potato chips. That's, honestly, that's our job. 
and 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 then want to pick up something else when you know I was working in video no you see that first frame you know about that ambulance driver uh, um, you know fighting Ebola uh, in uh, I think it was I think it was Liberia which was one of the pieces that helped win the Pulitzer like no you're not you see that body in the street you see his face you're gonna watch right till the end I mean, it's only six minutes for God's sakes but it's beautifully structured yeah um, and that's that's where craft comes in and I think Similarly with Paul Simon, like he doesn't want people to go, hello, darkness, my old friend, <laughs> what else is on? <laughs> you know, um, and maybe that's why he believes sound, which runs all the way through is really the, the emotional thing. I don't know. Um, it's, uh, it's our job. And, yeah. You know, I think we, we both, we both have, we have completely different sensibilities, Malcolm and I, and we, we latched onto different things, but I think we both knew that that was, that's our job. Um, if you started, you're going to listen right to the end. Did Paul get with your program? Because there's a couple of partnerships going on here, you and Malcolm as co-authors, yeah. mm -hmm. and then you need the source yeah. to be cooperative with that to some extent, because I, I've heard about people that get really proprietary about what they're sharing and how, they, how it's being done. No, I don't want it being done that way. He, well, here was our advantage. Nobody had ever done anything like this. And people kept saying, well, is, it, is he going to narrate it? No, nah, not really. It's going to be interviews. It's going to be journalism. Why is it going to be journalism? Well, we're going to write it like journalism. Who's going to read it? Well, kind of Malcolm, but you're going to be there. Yeah, sometimes. Like, we didn't, and Simon, like, I don't know what their initial conversation was because um, if one of us, either Malcolm or I, have to have lunch with famous people, it's going to be Malcolm. I think he's probably, he's, he can probably sell a little better than me. 